Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. We are here today to talk about summer internship and after college opportunities here at CVS Health. My name is Dave McGrain. I work on the corporate university relations team here at CVS. Um, I am actually a recruiter for the team. So I am one of the first ones that look at all of your resumes as soon as you guys apply to all of our roles and hopefully pass you through to uh, our great opportunities. I've been with CVS for just over a year now. I started right when the pandemic started. Um, so I was very lucky to get this position, um, but I've been working with um, employment opportunities, uh, especially for college students and youth for a long time. So uh, this is right up my alley and what I love doing. I love uh, being here, giving you guys opportunities and talking about it. Um, today, we are gonna kind of go at a high level talking about CVS and talking about um, a little bit of our culture and a little bit of the opportunities that we have to offer you. Um, and really, what is CVS more than just the store around the corner? Um, and as you saw in that video there that we just watched, which is pretty cool, there is a lot of opportunities that talk about we are this, we are innovation, we are that. Um, and really, we are more than just that store around the corner where you go to pick up your prescription or your shampoo. Um, and I'm sure you'll hear this a lot from um, our panelists, but we are a healthcare innovation company. We are really trying to take that whole rounded approach to making healthcare more accessible, affordable, um, and really touching a lot of uh, our clients and our customers throughout the country. Um, and you saw our slogan, our old uh, mission statement in the end of that video of putting people on their path to better health. And this year we have a, a uh, kind of updated mission in bringing our heart to every moment of your health. Um, and I think that speaks a lot to our other big focus this year, which is people. And speaking of people, we are a huge company. We have more than 300,000 colleagues across not just almost 10,000 retail locations, but across a lot of our business hubs all over the country as well. Um, and we're doing pretty well. We are number four on the Fortune 500 list right now, which is super exciting. Um, and we we are very proud of that. And you know, because of that, we wanna make sure we're giving you guys the best opportunities we can. Like I said, we are more than just that store. We are a healthcare innovation company. There's opportunities here uh, to serve over more than 100 million customers, depending on what business you're in, whether it's Caremark, Aetna, retail locations, what have you. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about all those different areas that we touch right now. As you can see here, we have a huge integrated approach to health. It's not just about the pharmacy. It is not even just about the minute clinics that a lot of you guys may have seen or even utilized in your life. There's lots of pieces to how we help our customers every day. There's things like Accordant. There's things like CVS Kidney Care, which is all about um, helping chronic kidney disease and even helping identify big kidney risks before they even happen for our customers. We've got our minute clinic, obviously, which um, you know gives free. I'm sorry, local services, sometimes free services, um, and a lot of other really accessible, affordable services to our customers. And really, the goal for all of these is trying to bridge the gap in healthcare that we're that we're seeing in our country today. And and that's our mission. We want to make healthcare accessible. Um, 
and not to mention Aetna as well, which is an insurance company. So we've got our business side and our healthcare side to all of this. And we've got a few different opportunities for you to join us, um, whether you're in school or just about to wrap up school. Um, and whether that's bachelor's or master's degree, there's a few different avenues in how you can join us. Um, first, we've got our externship program that is typically geared towards our sophomores. Um, that is a great short experience throughout the summer where we give you an opportunity to kind of get a taste of what is the culture at CVS um, and really how can you get involved. And there's a great feeder program to our internship program. Our internship program, which I'll go over some details in a few minutes, um, is one of our really robust pr programs. And I think it's even been rated in the top 100 uh, programs in the country, one of the top, uh, top 100 internship programs in the country in the past couple of years, which is great. Um, and that's gonna be available for math, bachelor's or master's students. And that's targeted at our current juniors. So if you're a junior out there, you may be looking at joining one of our internship programs next summer. Um, and then on after that, your internship program, we have our after college opportunities, as we call them. And those are really your full time roles. Um, those are the full time positions. And you've got two ways of getting in there. You can um, be a kind of a rising senior or um, finishing your graduation between May 20 or, or August 2021. But again, um, there's some flexibility to that. And this is another great opportunity if you are an intern to get it fed right into the after college full-time roles like our leadership development programs, which again, I will talk about in a few minutes. What I wanna do next is I wanna just talk about what are some of the programs that you can find internships and full-time roles in uh, here at CVS through the university relations team. We've got a whole bunch of business areas. You know, in order to make a company as uh, you know, wide spanning as ours run, it is way more than just your retail store, way more than just your pharmacist, um, way more than just your business leaders. We've got folks that are working in analytics, helping us predict what's gonna happen with our customers and our businesses and our partners. We've got finance folks. We have always got to balance the books. <laughs> Human resources. So if you really love working with people and healthcare hasn't really been uh, at the forefront of your mind, you can still really work with people every day um, through our human resources department and helping bring people on board that are interested in healthcare. Um, same thing, all of our IT folks running things behind the scenes and in front of the scenes when it comes to our apps, technology, things in the store, and helping all of us run our day-to-day -day work. Um, we've got supply chain as well in there, merchandising, retail management, the list goes on. Um, I do just want to give a call out that there is an opportunity to explore a lot of these roles. If you go to jobs.cbs help and then backslash students, that, that'll bring you to our landing page where you can see a lot of our opportunities. So I want to just talk about a little bit more of our internship experience and some of the details of that program at a high level. It is a 10 week experience that typically runs in the summers only. Um, and it's this year we are aiming to run it from June 6th to August 12th. The internship experience is really cool. Um, at CVS, our interns are treated as fellow colleagues and fellow employees. Um, there is not that stigma of interns do the grunt work. You get to work on real world projects, um, no matter what business area that's in. If it's supply chain and you've got great ideas for how to uh, make our supply chains a little bit more efficient, great. If you've got ideas on how to um, attract really diverse groups of folks and want to work with our human resources department, great. You, these are real world projects that you get to help take a hand in as an intern. Um, not only that, there's a lot of professional and personal development that we offer throughout our internship. We uh, want to provide you a service and provide you a background to continue your professional growth hopefully here at CVS, but if it does take you in other places, we want to set you up for success for sure. Not only that, there's mentorship opportunities and networking. As we mentioned, we are over 300,000 colleagues. There's lots of networking opportunities for you to meet folks all over the country um, and you know, do projects spanning across different business areas as well. 
Um, interaction with senior leaders. One of my favorite things about the internship is our speaker series event, where you get a chance to hear from some of our biggest leaders, including our CEO, Karen Lynch, which did a, a presentation for us this summer, which is great. Um, and you know, you as an intern, they get to firsthand ask questions and hear from these giant leaders and uh, successful uh, business leaders in our company, which is really fantastic. Um, so at a high level, that is our corporate internship experience. What I really encourage you all to do um, is to go to our landing page and sign up for our talent community. Look for our internship roles. Engage with us in conversation. We know that uh, in today's conversation and even throughout uh, some of the questions we talked to with our panelists, we're not going to answer all your questions. We would need a week to go through all of uh, the great experiences and opportunities and um, talking about how great our internship and roles are here at CBS. So what I really encourage you guys to do is take that next step and reach out to us, talk to us, apply, and we'll uh, return that because we want to engage with you guys and we want to help you guys understand CBS is a wonderful place to work. Um, and not only for our internships, but our full-time roles as well. Um, so our full-time roles, we have a, different, a few different types of full-time roles. Not only do we offer regular positions, you know, for folks coming out of college, but we offer what we call our leadership development programs or our after-college programs. These are continuations of our internship programs, but are really great kind of fast-track job, job training programs that help you really work on your professional growth. Um, and some of them are rotational, some of them are one years, four years, six years, but you get to uh, really work with some of the top leaders um, and be put on teams that are working in great areas of the company. Our full-time leadership programs are actuarial, information technology, finance, General management. Now, I know some of you are saying general management. What's that? That is a unique program where you we are looking for leaders and good managers and good people, um, people, people really to uh, work across all scopes of businesses. General management gets to talk, touch a lot of different business areas, which is great. Human resources, underwriting as well. Um, if you are one of our data folks, data science or data engineering, we've got opportunities for you as well. Like I said, this is way more than just your healthcare pharmacy. Um, we all work together to make the wheels of CVS turn for sure. Um, and as a friendly reminder, we want you to check out our jobs.cvshealth students landing page. Um, check out our opportunities for internships, full time roles. And like I said, reach out to us and engage with us. Um, enough from me at our high level description. Why you guys are here is to really hear from our great, great panelists um, and get an opportunity to uh, hear some of what they have to say about our company, our culture, um, and answer some of your questions. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, Lydia first, one of our underwriting LVP participants, to uh, introduce herself. Go ahead, Lydia. Hi, everyone. My name is Lydia Fahey. Um, I am in the Underwriting Leadership Development Program. Um, I started as a summer intern in 2018, and then I started full-time in the program in 2019. So I'm in my second rotation right now. And hi, good afternoon, everybody. This is Pedro Argueta. I'm part of the HR's Leadership Development Program, currently rotating through my third and final rotation. Um, this year, I'm getting the opportunity to support our corporate retail space as an HR business partner. Um, and again, I've been with the company for uh, a little bit over two years at this point. Hi, everyone. My name is Reem Kidane. Um, I'm in a full-time finance role, but I just graduated from the Finance Leadership Development Program in June. Um, I did not intern at Aetna or CVS, but I started um, at Aetna um, right after college in 2018. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Lakosi Hollingsworth. I'm a part of the Actuarial Leadership Development Program here at Aetna. Um, I've been with the company for about a year and a half. I did not intern as well. I started with the company right after college. Um, currently on a team that allows me to work with both actual anal and analytics. So we're trying to merge those two business areas. Um, and uh, I guess a fun fact would be I've uh, recently had a, a baby boy. All right, yes. Brandon, I will toss it back to you to uh, work with our panelists on the questions here. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank you, Dave. And congrats, Nikozi. That is amazing news. All right. So I have a list of questions for 
our prestigious panel here. Um, this first question is gonna be for Lydia and Pedro. And I was just wondering if you could tell me what is the company and in particular your team culture like at CBS? Yeah, I can go first. Um, I would definitely say the culture across the company and definitely on my team is extremely collaborative. Um, everyone is always very, very excited and willing to help out um, and work with others and very supportive coming from both management and senior leaders. Thanks for sharing that, Lydia. I would definitely have to agree with the word you used there of collaborative, and I guess I'll expand a little bit more, right? Um, across the enterprise, you just get this overwhelming feeling that everybody's willing to contribute to the combined organizational goals, right? Success for one team really means success for the enterprise. Uh, as an example, sitting in HR, a lot of what we do is staying up to date with our partners, um, hearing what best practices they're a part of so that we can then bring those recommendations back to the groups that we work with, um, right? So you never feel like you're working in a silo or working by yourself. Any endeavor that you take on, you can trust that there's a village behind you to offer the support and guidance along the way. Um, and it's so inclusive to it and just accessible. I mean, thinking of uh, like my network of colleagues or mentors and even leadership across the organization. If you want to have a conversation with someone, people are accessible um, and generally willing to collaborate on different projects, different initiatives and things like that. So would agree with the collaborative uh, aspect of our culture for sure. All right. Thank you both so much for that. Um, up next, uh, Reem and Nikozi. Would you be able to tell me about how you've adapted to working virtually? Sure, I can go first. So um, I'll start with saying, even before the pandemic, um, at, and I was on the Aetna side then, um, they already kind of had a culture of work from home when you needed to. Um, and some teams would do allow one or two days a week. And so I was on a team that worked from home every Friday. So in terms of the infrastructure um, and just the idea that people working from home wasn't very foreign for us. Um, so that was kind of nice way to ease um, to going full-time work from home. Um, but in terms of personally how it worked for me is you kind of just have to figure out what um, schedule you want to set, what you still want to do, even though you're work from home versus being in the office. Um, for me, I liked really breaking up my day with walks, whether it meant getting coffee um, with a colleague or um, just walking around the building before meetings. So I just had to incorporate that into my day, even though I'm at home. So sometimes I'll take meetings. If I don't need my screen, I'll just take them um, on the phone while I'm on a walk. Um, things like that. So it's just about figuring out what works for you. Um, I think another big thing is to make sure that it's very easy when you're having busy days to continue to work through lunch or to um, work, continue to work after work. Um, but you just have to make sure that um, you're taking care of yourself and that you're not um, you're not allowing the workday to escape you by just because you're working from home. Yeah, I'll uh, piggyback off of that. Um, I was gonna hit most of the points that Reem hit. Um, I've especially for me, it was a little bit difficult because I started right before the pandemic hit. So I didn't get an opportunity to take advantage of those uh, one or two work from home days. It was really just straight into virtual. And uh, the biggest challenge, again, is just knowing how to split your time, especially your personal time between work. It's easy, very easy to have those days just melt into each other. You wake up, start work. And I've seen some people work up until eight, nine o'clock um, that's not very healthy, especially if you're not split in your personal and work life at a very stark line. Uh, so a lot of the tips still remain the same. Try to break up your time, um, take walks, step away from the computer. Um, and another big thing is realizing that you can reach out to people. Uh, don't work in a silo. Um, working virtual can be a little bit isolating. You don't have those random uh, walk to somebody's cubicle and just have a small talk in the middle of work. Um, you can do the exact same thing over chat or over Skype. Okay, thank you guys so much for that. Um, following up, um, Nicozi and Pedro, can you tell me about the diversity efforts CBS Health is currently taking? Yeah, sure, I'll take that one first. Um, we, I guess we do have a couple ways we kind of tackle diversity and it really depends on where, what uh, aspect of diversity you're looking at. Um, we're tackling racial diversity. Um, recently, we've donated, CVS has uh, gone and put an initiative that donated about $5 million in funding to scholarships for about Black and Latinx communities, uh, students. Uh, we've also done a lot of attempts to 
make healthcare a little bit more affordable and accessible, especially to those in more underdeserving, underrepresented community, communities, rather, um, through the minute clinics, the health hubs. Um, I know you guys have heard a lot about those. Um, internal, we also have a lot of colleague resource groups. Um, so if you ever feel like you identify with a specific um, minority or specific group, we do have colleague resource groups to help you and support that. Yeah, and Nikozi, I think you hit on a lot of really great points there. I'll, I'll continue to share more about the CRG specifically or the colleague resource groups. Um, and, and really they're branded, right, as an opportunity for colleagues of the same affinity or ethnic background to come together. Um, and that's kind of like the overarching umbrella for them. But, um, and I'm part of a couple of CRGs, which is why I'm sharing this, but I found that you know, different people of all walks of life come together, right? So as an example, I'm part of the Latino CRG just because I, um, you know, that's, that's my ethnic background. But uh, a lot of the people that I've been able to network with are not necessarily um, there for that reason. They're really there for the networking aspect to be, um, you know, allies, to be mentors, and to just be partners um, and to collaborate together. Um, another thing that you hit on, Nikozi, was, you know, there's different aspects of diversity, right? Uh, one of the things that I'm involved in currently is um, looking at supply chain within our leadership development programs. And are we partnering with external companies whose, you know, diversity statements also align with ours? So I know supply chain is not something that necessarily comes to mind when we say diversity and inclusion, but uh, again, multiple levels of, of how we're looking at this. Um, even just from a recruiting standpoint, right? Internally, our, our HR organization, as an example, we don't just hire majors that are within HR or within related fields. We're really hiring people across the board that are bringing different perspectives, diverse perspectives to the table, um, because really innovation comes you know, when we have those different voices at the table and when everybody gets uh, a fair chance to speak their own mind. Um, so really diversity permeates every level of work, um, every level of just the way that we interact with each other. Um, internally and externally as well. All right, thank you both so much for that. All right, Lydia, so as an outsider, not somebody who works at CVS, but is very interested about CVS, can you tell me about the best aspect of the work culture that CVS has? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot to choose from here, um, but if I wanted to say the best aspect of the work, work culture, I would say how supportive everyone is um, of each other, whether that be other colleagues. Um, I have found that every person I've reached out to um, with questions or for help or anything at all, they're always more than willing um, to step in. And then also from management, um, I've built great relationships with managers and mentors, um, and I still have managers I've worked with in the past that still go out of their way to take their time to meet with me. Um, and then also the support from senior leaders. Um, I know earlier we had mentioned that for the internships, we have this thing called the speaker series um, and we have senior leaders speaking to our new hires and our interns. Um, and they're always so willing to come speak to us um, and offer their advice. All right, thank you so much. Um, and Lydia and Reem, um, this next one's for the two of you, but um, what has been your biggest surprise about working at CVS Health? My biggest surprise about working at CVS Health was, although it is such a large company like we heard about earlier, and you have all the opportunities of working for a really large company, um, it actually feels like a really small company a lot of the time um, because of the personal relationships you build with each other um, across the enterprise too, not even just in your departments. Um, and it feels like the people that work here aren't just here to do a job and then go home. Everyone is genuinely invested um, in their job, in the workplace, um, and in the company and our mission. I was actually going to say the exact same thing, so I, I definitely second that. Um, but I'll come up with something new. Um, but along those lines, I'd say that I was surprised to see um, how much of a culture of support there is in terms of wanting you to your career to progress. Um, and that doesn't always mean um, up the ladder, but it could be sideways as well. Um, so, for example, at a finance town hall when we still had them in person, um, they used to have slides where they would show people who got promotions and they would also show people who decided to move into a different position laterally. So maybe that means someone from finance went to HR or someone from marketing went to IT or something along those lines. And so I think that it just kind of shows that there's such a culture of wanting you to have your best growth and for you to um, whatever that may be for you, um, your managers and your teams are really supportive of that. 
All right, so along those lines of uh, something surprising, um, Pedro, Reem, can you tell me about a skill you've gained that you didn't expect? Yeah, absolutely. I'll start with this one. So, um, Lydia, you actually touched on the relationship um, aspect and how people are so willing to have those connections, but um, it's a skill in and of itself, relationship building. And it's something that I developed that I didn't felt necessarily expect to develop as a skill. Um, I mean, if you think about it, there isn't ever like a college course or anything like that that you can take on, on networking or building strong relationships. But when working at such a large organization, right, like at first for me, it was really daunting to come into this space, having only been at small businesses before and having only worked with small teams. Um, but I, I found out really quickly that the biggest thing that was that set me apart was being able to establish relationships quickly and not only establish them, but also be able to maintain them. Right. So if I had a like a meet, meet and greet with someone um, being able to come back to them in a few weeks or in a month and follow up on certain questions that they may have had of me or that I may have had of them. Um, so just keeping up with those relationships. Um, I, I really thought in the beginning, especially coming into HR, that a lot of the work that I was going to be doing was going to be transactional, right? So, you know, like helping people with requests or like doing backend type work. Uh, but I quickly found out that there's a whole other aspect uh, of work, and that's about you know really being proactive in terms of projecting business needs and and partnering with the right people to pull the right levers that are going to support our partners to you know be able to accomplish their goals and the best way to do that again is relationship building um and then just remaining adaptable through it all right like change is, is always a constant things are changing all the time so being able to be adaptable and build strong relationships i think those are some skills that i developed that i didn't necessarily expect to I oh, absolutely agree with that. So I'll say that um, something I was, um, uh, excuse me, something that um, still did not expect to gain um, was that with the committees that you're on as part of the leadership development programs, you do a lot of things kind of to the side of your desk um, as part of these committees, things that are not um, directly related to your day job. And so whether it be recruiting events or setting up networking events, um, it could be um, working on um, social activities or um, presentations that you're going to do um, alongside other people in the committee. So things like that, I wasn't really expecting to develop those skills because they're not exactly the job I was applying for, right? But I think it's been really helpful because the skills you gain in those functions really help you think critically and think um, differently about the role that you're in. And sometimes you can carry over those skills um, and also the relationships that you're um, building with those people into the role, the new roles that you go into. All right, thank you both so much for that. So, Nikozi, can you tell me what a day in the life is like for you in your role? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I guess I start my day off with a walk, <laughs> just to break up the morning already. Um, then I get into emails. Um, I really believe that starting the day off with a few simple tasks and email responses is, um, you know, sets you up for a few easy tasks to complete set you up to complete some bigger tasks later on in the day. Um, as my day progresses, I start getting into my main project, which again is actual actuarial analytics. So what I focus on is um, building models for our pricing initiatives um, that uses a little bit of data science, but comes from an actuarial perspective. Uh, so a lot of my time is spent coding these models and running a couple different versions of them. Uh, later on in the day, usually I get into more of my meetings where it can run anywhere from either analyzing some of those results, um, catching up with mentors, uh, and catching up with others, like I said before, uh, just to split the monotony of the day. Um, as the day progresses, I usually try to wind down, try to set a hard deadline for either five, six o'clock. Um, so I usually end the day up again with emails because again, there are simple tasks that you get done um, without having to roll over for a couple hours. All right, thank you so much. So moving on to Lydia, would you be able to tell me how you prepared for your current role? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've already talked about the importance of building connections and networking, um, and that's definitely something that came into play here. Um, when I was looking at my next rotation opportunities, 
um, I definitely went out of my way to network with multiple people um, on each of the teams that had an opportunity for us. Um, and that way I could really decide on um, like what team culture I was interested in, um, the kind of work they were doing, what the team dynamic was like, um, things like that. So I definitely used that when it came um, to me putting in my choices for rotation. Um, as far as once I had an assigned rotation, how I prepared for it um, was definitely using my resources and using other connections I had built. Um, so the team I'm currently on, I was actually able to reach out to a former intern um, and connect with her so I could get a little bit more information about her position, um, how she liked it, um, and what her day-to-day -day work kind of looked like. Um, and then I also got to use the prior ULDP in that position as a resource um, and kind of go through what her first rotation looks like for her um, to see how it would be for me. All right, thank you very much. So Reem, you mentioned that you uh, were a former intern. So could you tell us what from your internship experience has helped you the most in your current role? So it's going to, again, kind of go back to the relationship building. A really big thing as an intern is you're going to want to uh, do a good job of reaching out to different people. So like Leah was saying, you can learn about different roles. Um, you can't have every job at the company. You don't have time to shadow every job at the company. So a good way to get that uh, diversity and um, perspective is by meeting with different people. And so that was something that I carried from my internship into my roles. Um, and a lot of my roles, I've had to reach out to people that I don't know um, and to reach out to teams, you know, asking them for information, asking them um, if you can meet to learn about their areas um, because you need their, maybe something that was part of their work is gonna overlap with yours. And so I think just being able to build those relationships and being able to have that line of communication has been um, really helpful for um, learning that in my internship and taking it on um, today. All right, uh, moving on to Nicosi and Lydia, can each of you talk about uh, what you found was your biggest challenge in your role so far? Yeah, I'll start things off with that. Um, I'd have to say clear and concise communication. Um, so my role has me working with a lot of different departments. Um, underwriting is one of them. And a lot of times you, you don't realize how much your signals gets crossed. Um, especially when you assume that others have the same background information that you do. Um, so surprisingly, that's one of the skills I was able to develop is being able to present to different audiences um, and being conscious of the fact that not everyone has the same background as you. Um, being very concise with your, your message, your communication, and you come off exactly the way um, you want to represent yourself. I would say that my biggest challenge um, in my current role was actually transitioning into this new rotation. Um, so part of these leadership programs is that you move positions. Um, each pro program kind of varies, but my first rotation was 18 months. Um, so by the end of that 18 months, I felt very comfortable in my role, very confident in the work I was doing. Um, and I felt like I had a really good handle on my job. And although I did move to another underwriting team, um, I realized very quickly how much I did not know. And I was definitely out of my comfort zone. And it was a difficult transition for me to go from being so comfortable to out of my comfort zone um, after already being at the company for 18 months. And then I realized how great of a development opportunity that was um, and how much more I had learned in just six months um, by putting myself out of my comfort zone. All right, great. Well, um, moving on then, let's uh, Pedro, can you tell us the best career advice you've ever received? Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a great question. And I feel like I need to set up a little bit of context for this one, um, because w when you're early in career, I think it can be really overwhelming to know what you want out of an experience or even decide what experiences you need to take on that are going to develop you in the right way and put you on the right path in terms of like the longer term career goals that you have. Um, and one of the things that you have to really safeguard early in career is your time, right? Like, are you investing your time in the things that are actually going to be building up the skills that you need to build up to get to where you need to? Um, so to solve for that and, and kind of ambiguity in terms of like deciding what to take on or what projects to involve yourself in, uh, a leader once shared with me um, kind of a compass or a criteria for deciding when to say yes to different opportunities. And it was 
really about asking yourself three questions. Uh, the first one was, have I done it before, right? Because if it's something that you're already familiar with, you have a lot of experience with, then maybe it's not worth taking on, right? You want to seek out experiences that are novel, that are new, that are going to push you a little bit out of your comfort zone. The second question was, am I passionate about it, right? Because if you're lacking the passion for something, at the end of the day, it's just going to be a drag to get through it, and you're not going to get the best benefit out of it possible. Um, and then finally, right, can I improve upon it? So if you do take this on, if, you, if it's something that's novel, that's new for you, that you're passionate about, are you going to be able to put your mark on it, to be able to leave some sort of legacy or to create something um, that didn't exist before? Uh, and I, I found that just, again, early in my career, asking myself those questions when presented with different opportunities has really helped me decide where to invest my time in so that, that, that I continue to develop my brand and really focus it on, on some specifics rather than just kind of taking everything on and maybe doing a bad, bad job at time management. Um, so that's been something that's really helped me out so far. All right. Great, great answers overall. Um, I have one last preset question and then we can go into the uh, live questions coming in. So if you have a question, feel free to open up that Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and go ahead and submit that. But the last question I have for everyone is, what is one tip you'd like to share about the transition from student to professional? And let's start off with Lydia. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would just say take as many opportunities as you can um, and have capacity to do so, especially when it is out of your comfort zone. Um, I personally noticed that I was very comfortable with doing some things and those would be the, the one and only things I volunteered for. Um, and I slowly started volunteering for things that I felt was out of my comfort zone. And now I've realized that I have other skills that I didn't even realize were strong skills of mine. Um, and my in, I had other interests that I didn't realize um, I had had before. So I would definitely say be open to opportunities um, and be open to getting out of your comfort zone because that's where most of your development will happen. I can go next. Um, just on the theme of getting out of your comfort zone, I'd also say get comfortable with making mistakes and correcting them. So I think as a student, when you make a mistake, it's usually you miss something on an exam, maybe you missed an assignment, and it's not really going to affect anyone but yourself um, for the most part. And so you can kind of brush off the mistake. Whereas at work, when you make mistakes, which is bound to happen, like we're all human, um, you just have to get comfortable with saying, hey, I made a mistake. Here's the mistake and here's how I'm going to fix it moving forward. Um, so because everything we do, like, again, going back to the collaboration, everything we work on is dependent on one another. So for finance, I'm preparing reports and then a different team is going to use those reports to make a decision. So if I make a mistake, I have to make sure to correct it so that people have the latest and greatest information. So I just say get comfortable making mistakes and correcting them. Yeah, I, I'll add a little bit. And I love that, Reem, about making mistakes, right? I think it's, it's, it's OK to make mistakes, like give yourself permission to do that. Um, I would say like making the transition from student to professional as well, like you're coming from a world where it's all about learning, right? So hang on to that as much as you can. Like, yes, we're working professionals, but I'm still learning things every day. Um, I see mistakes as opportunities for growth and development as opposed to failures, right? Like, yes, there are consequences, but as long as you're kind of, um, you know, facing them head on and saying, how can I do better next time, right? How can I use this experience that I had making a mistake or a, identifying a potential gap to improve next time? How do I make this process more efficient for myself? So I, I would say like hanging on to that love of learning, I think is, it, is gonna carry you a long way because people do notice that when, when you're willing to learn and when you're willing to take on new experiences that are, are gonna help you grow. All right, and uh, I guess I'll answer last. Um, I think my answer is, kind of like a recurring theme. I think we've all kind of touched on it and it's being very aware of how you spend your time. Um, making sure that you spend your time on things that'll contribute to your overall success because um, you've always heard time is money, but time is more than that. Time is happiness. Time is health. Time is everything. Um, making sure that you spend your time on what you think your time is worth it. And that's both in your personal and professional life. Um, I can attest that I've spent hours binging Game of Thrones, but that was not the best decision. Uh, the same thing with work. Um, don't spend your time, especially hours, working on one project. Um, and that goes on into a, one thing that uh, Pedro mentioned. 
if you can't leave your mark on it, if you can't actually improve it, if you can't, um, if you're not passionate about it, um, it's not worth your time. So overall takeaway from that is be intentional with your time and spend it where it needs to be. I'd love to jump in on that and, and provide an answer as well, if that's all right. Please um, go for it. Coming from someone from the uh, recruiting and human resources perspective, my advice to you is to uh, take time to reflect. Um, as coming out of college, you're always thinking about what's next, what's the next move, but don't forget to take the time and reflect on the experiences you've had and the skills you've taken away from those experiences. Um, CVS, we're not just about, hey, you need 10 years experience, you need to be 100% this major to get this job. Um, every, we, we recognize everybody has skills and assets from different experiences throughout their life that can contribute to the roles in a very special way. So I encourage you all to take the time to reflect about what those uh, experiences you've had are and, and those skills that you can pull away from them. All right, great advice, thank you for that. So we have about uh, 15 minutes left. So we're gonna go ahead and go into some of the questions from the audience. So starting off with a question from Liam and this is from Reem. Uh, Reem, what types of responsibilities do you have or projects are you working on as a consultant? What does the typical day look like for you? Sure, so I'll kind of give you a range and go through my experience with the finance leadership development program and where I am now. So I started off in local markets expense management. I um, was very much an FP&A role where you're doing kind of cyclical month close, forecasting, planning, budget, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I kind of knew what my day-to-day -day looked like based off of what time in the month it was. Um, and then for my next role, I was in medical economics. And so for that role, I did ad hoc requests. Um, I did one monthly report and the rest were all ad hoc. So I, it really, my day depended on what kind of request I was getting and who it was coming from. Um, if it was a lower priority, it could kind of take my time with it. Um, if it was someone higher up, you know, I really have to um, put some time into it and it might need to involve um, some other people and some other departments. And then for my last role, I was on the federal plans team. And so my, I actually did one project that was for the entirety of the year. And so every day I was doing something related to that project. And so that usually meant working in Excel and then reaching out to, um, it was, I had to reach out to people across Aetna and CVS to gather information. And so it was setting up meetings so that I would kind of be able to make that deadline at the end of the year um, to submit it to the government. Um, and then for my role now, all of these roles have been in analyst or consultant capacity, just a little bit different. Uh, for my role now, it's project-based. And so um, we kind of have a work stream that we're working towards and we work with um, HR partners, IT, different areas um, to figure out what finance needs to bring to the project to make this end goal happen. Um, and the deadline for it is in flux, but um, it really just, my day depends on um, what's needed from me and from my team and then what kind of information we need from the other teams. Hope that answered the question, but let me know if not. Oh, I think that that for sure answered it, at least in my opinion. And um, this next question is, uh, I think, for Dave. So this question is from Lily, who wants to know, what is the timeline inter interview process for internships? Great question. Um, so a lot of our internship roles will actually be opening up over the next few weeks for next summer. Um, the timeline for that really depends on each business. Some business areas um, have one or two rounds of interviews. Some have um, some skills tests if you're in the more uh, technical roles. Um, but I'd say uh, on average, it would probably be about two to five weeks on average of some back and forth, potentially a couple of interviews, um, roughly. All right, thank you very much. This next question is for anybody on the panel, so whoever thinks of an answer, go ahead. But um, this is from Maria, who wants to know how prepared did you feel from your schooling to go in into such a big company where most things learned through uh, this experience? I can start speaking a little bit to that. Um, I mean, I think in general, I felt prepared just as like an educated person. Uh, but when I came to HR, as an example, like th there was not an HR major at my school. Um, my undergrad was actually in psychology. So while it was related and I tried to focus my coursework around uh, like organizational behavior and industrial organizational psychology, I didn't have that specific curriculum that set me up to go into like an HR job uh, specifically. Um, so again, I think I brought a lot of just, you know, general knowledge and professionalism with me, but a lot of the learning that I needed to be able to be effective at my job, I learned in role. 
Um, so every team that I've been on put together a really robust onboarding plan for me, whether it was just, you know, meeting people, meeting key partners or understanding the business. Like I, I worked in benefits for my first rotation, learning how healthcare works. Um, all of that really happened internally um, on the job. And you kind of, you know, do that formally and then you continue to do that informally as you pick up more and more pieces of work. Um, so to answer the question, I guess the short answer is a little bit of a blend of both. Um, but there's a lot of training and learning opportunities that are also offered in role once you start. Um, I was going to say, very similar to Pedro. I think that I felt like I had the soft skills um, and maybe a little bit of the technical skills coming into the um, job and that you pick up from college like in communications classes, um, when you're building graphs and all that, that's going to apply at work. But in terms of the business knowledge and the systems knowledge, I don't think that, I mean, Dave could probably tell you better that you're expected to know that. And that's a lot of what Pedro is talking about. You're going to learn on the job. Um, no one's going to expect you to come into the team and be a master of what that team does. They're going to teach you, they're going to train you on the systems and on, on what you need to know for that role. And so I think it felt like I was confident enough in the soft skills um, and then the rest is trainable. I was just going to say pretty much exactly that. Um, you learn your soft skills in college. You learn how to use Excel, things like that. But most of the training does happen on the job. There's no underwriting class that I took. Um, I pretty much started right at the beginning in underwriting um, right here. So it you don't didn't need that like prior knowledge of our business systems um, or my day to day work. All righty. Uh, Dave, did you have an answer too? Um, I did, yes. And I wanted to say that you guys are in a unique position because, uh, you know, especially if you come in through an internship, you've got a couple of years of school left. So you're always not set in stone. So you may come here and really get an opportunity in an internship to work with, you know, you might be in human resources and get an opportunity to work with finance and find out you've got a great knack for it. Um, and we try to give those opportunities as well. So it's not just about, you um, the transition of college to here, but perhaps even college to an internship, then back to college, then back to here. So there's a lot of different paths to take. All righty, great answers overall. Thank you all. So we have time for a couple more questions. Um, this question comes from Evan, and this is for anybody. Um, Evan wants to know, in your experiences, do you find that feedback from other peers is important for, for personal growth? If so, why? I can start with this one. Um, I definitely think that's important. And I know both teams that I've been on um, have actually incorporated a peer review process um, in our work because you'll see that everyone does things a little bit differently and you really have something to learn from everyone. Um, and even in my ULDP program, we have different committees that we work on um, and we all provide feedback with each other. So I think it Providing feedback and receiving feedback from your peers um, is just a really good way to get more comfortable um, because that's something you're going to need to be able to do for the rest of your career, know how to give feedback and also how to take it. Um, so I think your peers is a great place to start. I'll share a little bit, too, on the feedback. Um, I, I think it's critical. I mean, I think like in, I feel like I'm speaking a lot to my experiences in HR, but, you know, some of it can be generalizable to other areas. But like we really thrive on feedback, right? Like. It's that constant, you know, um, hearing from your peers of how you did at a presentation. Like it could be something as simple as that of just giving you pointers of like next time, you know, watch yourself the way you speak or the words that you're using, um, you know, maybe tailor your, 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 your speech to your audience or whatever, like things, small things like that to even bigger things, right? Like, you know, as we look at our development plans, like over the course of a year, what are some of the things that we need to be involving ourselves more into um, to be able to really, you know, start getting closer and closer to our goals? So like feedback, I think really enables us to be successful. Otherwise, like we're just kind of like heads down in our work every day. Um, and we may not realize whether we're on the right path or not to be able to reach our goals, right? Evan, you meant, or Dave, you mentioned something um, earlier about the importance of self-reflection right? Like being able to really take a step back from the everyday work and just not be bogged down in emails for a little bit is so important to be able to say, you know, am I doing the right things for the right reason? Um, and can I get a little bit of feedback from, you know, my network, my peers, um, again, just to be able to continue your, your self-development and your self-growth. So I, I think it's super important. Yeah, I'd like to uh, add a little bit to that. I think you guys covered most everything to do with feedback um 
I did want to say though that um, you know feedback is uh, is always important to take a reflect again uh, take a reflection on where you stand, but also the, the biggest reason for feedback is a lot of times we're not fully aware of how we come across. So uh, as Pedro mentioned in a meeting, um, how he said one thing may have come across completely differently from how he meant it to, to come out. Or um, we might think that we're doing really good work, but actually at the end of the day, we just spent the whole week doing one Excel trick. Um, so positive reinforced feedback is really good just to give yourself perspective as well as give yourself a kind of a benchmark to improve. All right. Those are very great answers. And unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions. So Dave, I'll throw it over to you to close us out and to give some uh, next step instructions. Thank you all panelists for um, all of your very honest uh, answers today. Um, you know, I, I sense a lot of genuineness uh, in your answers and I appreciate that. Um, for all of our attendees, like I said, this is not the end um, and there's a lot more for you to find out about us. So definitely uh, take the time to uh, look up CVS, look up university relations, type in CVS, internships, after college opportunities, all those Google pages and Google searches will get you to our landing page. Um, and there you will see opportunities listed from internships to full-time opportunities. Um, and then you, I also really, really encourage you to sign up for the talent community um, on our job application site. You can say you are looking for roles in um, underwriting and with keywords internships and as internships in underwriting become available, you'll get notified. Um, so there's lots of cool uh, notifications that you can get by signing up for that talent community. Um, but again, I really encourage you guys to reach out to us, apply, um, let us get to know you and how you can be a great fit for us here uh, at CBS. All righty, thank you, Dave. Thank you everyone on the panel for your insight. Um, again, if you're interested in learning more, you can check out CVS's Way Up page, or you can go to their jobs page. Both links are in the chat, so feel free to check those out. But uh, thank you guys again for joining us today, and hope you all have a great evening.